Okay, so this right here is catnip. We literally transplanted it into that pot like two months ago. So I'm gonna just try to break it up, spread it out. I don't know. What am I gonna do with it? I guess we'll see. Okay, so this is what we do to um, reuse these plastic bottles. It's pretty convenient. We take the label off first so we can see through it. And then I can just kind of pinch it a little and cut it just just where the next stop's kind of being at an angle. And then you invert it like this. So I figured this out one time we were, this is how I got my lamb's ear. Uh, we were up north and foraging, walking around, and we got that lamb's ear and we had a water bottle in the car. And so, we just cut it using Abby's knife, stuck it in there, and uh, it was a tiny little piece, ended up propagating, and you've seen on my videos uh, how that lamb's ear has taken off since then. So my whole point in doing this is when you invert it like this, just barely at the top, it kind of keeps the leaves out, but still allows the stem to propagate underneath here and form roots. So I, I've noticed before, like in the past, if I try to propagate something and um, the leaves get too wet, but sometimes the leaves go down inside and get wet and it causes like really stinky, like fish tank water. And I just don't feel like it does so well. So this is how I reuse these plastic bottles because although we try not to buy the plastic bottles as much and I mean sometimes we just do so we try to use them until they can no longer be used before we send them to be recycled so after you invert it then you pour some water in And with the inverted top, it kind of acts like a barrier. So you can fill it all the way to the bottom. Actually, even a little bit more water you could put in there. You could like all the way to here and it, it wouldn't cause a problem with your leaves. So then, here, our spearmint is gonna be our table. We just, trim the heck out of that spearmint so I have a pile of it sitting here um, well this is a poor example but the first one I grabbed so we just like pull the leaves off oh well, there's just a few leaves usually only leave like the top little crown this one's kind of teeny tiny and there are a few nodes on here usually I mean honestly spearmint and mint I find like propagate overnight no root hormone no honey no nothing it's just if you're gonna start a propagation process or learn how to do it this is probably one of the easiest ones to do I just cut it the stem at an angle you can cut it like see there's a node right there and there and that's probably where the roots will come out but I like to have it a little bit longer so that's where I cut it and then literally just stick it in the bottle and um, the roots will form but the leaves don't get wet I also put several in here Okay, so normally I wouldn't crowd stuff as much when I propagate it, but sincerely has never mattered to us with uh, mint or spearmint in this case. And so there you are. I don't know if you can see the bottom. And we just refill it, you know, depending on your area. We're in zone 9B, so things dry up pretty quick here. So we have to refill it. But literally in a couple days, this will have roots. 
and um, and I'll show you where we stick it in a minute. We know that's just our table. And here's another quick thing to propagate in. I don't know if any of you all out there know that. Okay, slow down, Connor Turntable. That a Parmesan cheese lid, or like these came from like the mini marshmallows my daughter is obsessed with. Um, they fit mason jars, like the standard mason jar. So um, I buy my Parmesan cheese now in bulk. So we just put it on a mason jar and fill it with our Parmesan cheese, but it also works great in this situation um, because it kind of keeps things separated a little bit, but it helps to uh, put a barrier so that the leaves don't slip down in there. You want to turn it around so they can see. And this is, I've propagated 10 different things in the same jar with this kind of lid and it works super easy so even if you are like me now and you buy your parmesan in bulk because it's cheaper there's a chance you know somebody that doesn't and uh might be able to save those lids for you another cool thing about propagating in these water bottles is they actually fit if any one of you has like one of these partial pallet gardens or whatever this is the bottom of a pallet pot rack that we made for my daughter-in-law and son for Christmas one year. So we just added some hooks and put it on the wall. And it's a great place to keep a few extra things together and propagate. Looks kind of cool on the wall, I think. So here it is. No one got time for that. <laughs> yeah, go get some straw to put underneath it. These are your crazy pumpkins. I forget the name from Baker Creek. I'll look it up and post it. There's another big one over there. Yeah, we know about that one, but Abby is going to grab some straw to put How under did we this, miss one? this one. I don't know. Because it's like five times bigger than the other It one. was behind the volunteer here, Tomatillo. But this thing's huge, but I think we're going to put some. Um, straw underneath it and try not to get the straw wet but I think it's kind of laying on our cool decking I don't want it to burn so there is a discovery see what happens when you can't spend every day in the garden even for a few minutes so closer look we see that uh, we have a an escape tomato or potato 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 tomato tomato an escape potato plant from underneath the tire so we just put some dirt well but you know how that goes <laughs> <laughs>